my video blog in my studio. I'm Gail Weisfield, a professional watercolor artist. Today we're going to talk about how to paint trees, how to put trees, beautiful trees with a lot of character into your painting. The big problem when a beginner generally starts painting trees is they consider the elements of the tree, the trunk, the branches, and they're not really considering the trees as a whole volume and with beautiful edges and beautiful shapes and value. So when they begin to paint the tree, you can generally see this is a pretty good sample of how most trees would be painted by beginners. They, they start with a trunk and then they add their branches to the tree and the trees begin to look like little soldiers. They're generally evenly spaced and none of them stand out in importance. So what I'd like to show you today is how to take that same concept of a row of trees and offer it the personality that it should have to be the subject of your painting. So when I paint these trees, I generally paint with a flat brush and I use a rigger and sometimes I'll use a dagger. Right now I'm gonna do a silhouette so you can just see what the big shape and the form is. So if you take a flat brush and you place it on your paper, you realize the corner of this brush by pushing down gives me the opportunity for a, uh, different size triangles. So to start this, this drawing, I would select the top of the tree. The tree is quite delicate and very fine here. That means I have the right amount of moisture in my brush. If I had too much water in my brush, I'm going to show you that, what would happen is I would have a bigger blob and that's not exactly a, a good looking top to the tree. So if you have too much water in your brush, what you need to do is you take a piece of tissue or, or a rag and you remove some of the moisture out of your brush by drying the, uh, the, the heel of your brush. That takes the moisture out. So now I'm going to go back. I'm going to start the tip of my tree. I always locate the tip of my tree. And then with a flicking motion, that triangular shape, I lift and flick this tree down. This gives me these nice little rough edges here that give the branch a sense of, of reality. No trunk, just flicking, going for the shape. I'm looking at interesting shapes. I'm not in any way interested in this being a tree. Now I know I want a second tree, so placing the tree at a different height. Be careful you don't have soldiers. I start again with the flick. Maybe this tree is a little bit different. You know, this is my aunt, this tree. She's tall and skinny, and she always turns to the right. And now I want to add a third tree because generally we balance things with three. So I'll make this tree smaller and I'll put it closer to this tree. I'm still paying attention not to close these edges, to leave these light areas coming through. Having a lot of water in my brush so I keep quite a bit of moisture on my paper as I'm putting this on. And I look at the overall shape. Maybe this is too big of a shape. So maybe I need to give it a little bit more interest here. I don't want to close all my gaps because I want to create some interest. Now if I'm coming into a rock at the bottom, I have to consider what happens at the bottom edge of my painting. I would shape the form with the tree. If it's coming in front of grass, I would dry brush the grass into the bottom of the tree. Well now obviously we have to have a trunk. So I use my palette knife a lot and I'm going to scratch my trunk into my tree and the moisture is still in my pigment so it gives me the opportunity to pull some beautiful lines that are far more random than anything I could ever paint with a brush, creating a much more beautiful and more natural looking tree. Isn't that simple and isn't that beautiful? Now I've got this, this in. If I have too much trunk, let's say I don't want this much trunk, I can cover a bit of it up. Okay, if I want some very nice fine lines, I can go to my rigger, put my rigger in, Maybe I have, let's put a, uh, a dead tree in here next to it. So with my rigger, I might put in another tree, and it would also have the same quality as these trees. Okay, now we're ready to try our trees on a, a painting. I have my background wash prepared based off of my value study. I have uh, added the entire value range. My foreground trees or my subject trees are going to be placed in front of a lighter background so that they will show up better. So now I have this area of the painting. You can see I've left it lighter. I'm going to get a much brighter uh, subject reflecting. And this offers me the opportunity to have a uh, more color in my trees. So I never use green from a tube. So I'm going to be mixing Prussian blue and burnt sienna, which I find is one of the nicest Northwest greens you can get. It has a lot of warmth to it. 
If this, to this combination, I can add raw sienna, any yellows, any blues that I want. Any blue but ultramarine blue. It's the one blue that makes gray rather than green because it has so much red in it. So with enough moisture in my brush, I want to add some color to my area where my trees are going to go. And as you can see, I haven't drawn anything on. And the reason I haven't drawn these trees on is it's going to limit where they go. It, it takes away the beauty of the watercolor. So starting with some light colors, I'm just going to add some colors in here. I know I'm going to have possibly the top of one tree about here. Uh, be careful that you don't get and too much water in my brush right there is what I showed you earlier. Be careful you don't get your trees too close to the edge of your painting. If you get them too close to the edge, it looks amateurish or they lead the eye out of the painting and ruin the composition. So I just took the moisture out of my brush. I've extended my point because I wanted a nice fine point. I've added some nice yellows. I'm going to put some, some greens in. And now I'm going to add my, my brush flick that we talked about in the silhouette demonstration. So Prussian blue and yellows is a beautiful green. I want my trees to have lots of color and lots of, lots of pretty things happening in them. So there is the base of my first tree. If this sits here, my second tree, I think I don't want it at the same angle. I'm going to change the angle and raise the height of this tree and change the branches and allow this dry brushing. Look at the beautiful area where the yellow comes through on the trees. And don't always draw in your trunks all the way. Remember, it's the big shape. It's this negative shape of interest. Maybe I want a little branch there. I analyze each stroke I make. You're going to find painting in watercolor is very similar to chess. Every move you make affects the next move. Every brush stroke you put on affects what happens next in your painting. So you want to be very careful that each brush stroke you put on your painting does what you want it to do. It works for you. So now I have that. Now I'm going to do a little darker tree and maybe I'll put this tree over here. I don't want it the same distance as here so I'm going to have to put it closer and lower. Can't be the same height because I don't want soldiers. I'm going to charge some of that color around my painting to give my tree a, a little more interesting uh, look because remember if our painting is not interesting people are certainly not going to stand and look at it. They're going to move to the painting next to yours that has some beauty to it. I'm shaping the rocks here. So now I have a bulk of trees. I want to put another little tree over here. It doesn't have to touch these trees but this tree gives scale to these trees and these are the decisions you make as an artist. You go in and look for the opportunities of what you want. So now I've got the base of my trees in. I'm going to scrape some of the paint out of my palette so I have plenty of liquid on my brush. And I'm going to put these trunks in. Now this is scratching with a palette knife. I'm pulling the paint off of the dry paper, which leaves a white mark. If my paper was too wet, it would leave a dark mark. And that's not what I wanted for this case. I wanted the bright light reflecting off the trunks so that the trees felt like they had a little life to them. Don't make any of your lines the same again. Every brush stroke should be a different color. Every line should go a different direction. Interest is what we're striving for here. The top of this little tree is a little too bulky so I can add a stroke or two. Now these trees offer my viewer the opportunity to know a little bit more about my scene. And when this uh, is dry, I'll take a rigger and go into my final painting and possibly do some, add some trunk color in a few places, not all over, don't get carried away. It just adds a highlight to your painting. That nice little brown, it's not everywhere, it's just the tiny little touches like that are what really give us a beautiful tree. This painting is an example of uh, a group of trees as the subject of the, the painting. It's the same group of trees, the same concept that I just showed you in the demonstration. You can see that the trees are varied in distance apart. The tops of the trees are interesting because they're not all at the same level. There's a great deal of detail and color variation within the trees. It makes a beautiful subject and something the viewer would want to look at. This painting is another example of how we can use our demonstration. It will appear in Splash 11, 2010, and it's an example of how the same techniques we just learned will produce the evergreen trees in the background. We have a deciduous tree in the foreground, and the evergreen trees are used the same techniques I just showed you in the grouping of trees. It's the edges, the shapes, and the values that really tell the viewer what they're seeing. <music>